Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we'll talk about the Battle of Valverde, New Mexico, located in Saqqaro County, New Mexico, on February 20th to the 21st, 1862. In February 1862, Confederate Brigadier General Henry Hopkins Sibley determined that he would invade New Mexico with his army and defeat the Union forces guarding it. He would take the capital of Santa Fe and then westward to California and add California as part of the Confederacy. His army consisted of 2,500 Texans who were part of the Army of New Mexico. In Sibley's way was the Union forces at Fort Craig, led by Colonel Edward Canby. Canby's forces numbered 3,800 men, of which only 1,200 were seasoned soldiers. The remaining men were New Mexican and Colorado volunteers, along with 500 local militia. It should be noted that the famous Kit Carson commanded the 1st Regiment of New Mexican Volunteers. Sibley led his forces to within 15 miles of Fort Craig on the evening of February 13th. He determined the fort was too strong to be sacked and deployed his men in a line to hopefully lure the Union troops out into the open. By the 20th of the month, the Confederate Army had grown bored of this and set a force to investigate the fort itself. They arrived on the hills opposite Fort Craig, and this force, commanded by Confederate Colonel Thomas Green, attempted to set up artillery on those heights. Unfortunately, they were suppressed for the night by Union fire. During this time, Canby had anticipated this move by the Confederates and sent Union Captain James Creighton out to blow up some of the rebel picket posts. He did this by sending mules loaded with barrels of gunpowder and lit fuses. Yes, I did say that. There were two mules loaded with barrels of gunpowder and lit fuses and they were pushed out the fort towards the Confederates. Unfortunately, the Union mules were too well trained and walked back into the Union camp blowing up. Surprisingly, no Union troops died, but it did cause a stampede with the Confederate supply train of beef cattle and excess horses, which ran right into the Union camp. This had the unexpected effect of reducing Confederate Commander Sibley's rations and cavalry transport. The next morning, the Confederates marched an advance party of four companies of the 2nd Texas Mounted Rifles, commanded by Major Charles Pyron, towards Valverde Ford. The Union scouts in the area reported this movement back to Canby, who sent a combined force of infantry, artillery, and cavalry to intercept them under Colonel Benjamin S. Roberts of the 5th New Mexico Infantry. However, they realized the artillery was slowing this down, so Canby then sent the cavalry under command of Major Thomas Duncan ahead to secure the ford. Major Duncan had reached the ford ahead of the Confederates and blocked their passage. The Confederates called for reinforcements and set their defenses up on the riverbed. The reinforcements for the Confederates arrived and found themselves with more troops than the Union, but they were armed with shotguns, which had less range than the Union forces' rifles. Additional reinforcements for the Confederates arrived in the early afternoon under Colonel Thomas Green himself. Green authorized a cavalry company to attempt to charge on what they believed were inexperienced New Mexico troops. They unfortunately found out the Union troops were experienced Colorado soldiers who defeated the charge fairly easily, killing at least 20 cavalry soldiers and almost all the horses. By early evening, the Union appeared to have the upper hand, and Union Commander Canby decided to push against the Confederate left flank. He repositioned his troops to do this, but it weakened his center, leaving an opening for Colonel Green of the Confederate forces to attack. This attack was stopped, and the Union right flank moved up, advancing after the Confederates. In response, Green ordered his right flank to charge the Union center in three waves. The Confederate troops attacked ferociously, partially because their water supply was almost out and the nearest water was past the Union troops. After these waves of attacks, the Union troops retreated. Sibley, the overall Confederate commander, was about to order another attack when Union Commander Canby asked for a truce to remove the bodies of the dead and the wounded. Sibley agreed to this while Canby ordered a retreat with the dead and wounded back to Fort Craig, leaving the road to Santa Fe open to the Confederate forces. The reported losses were 187 for the Confederates, 264 Union casualties, who had an additional 200 deserters. Union Commander Canby blamed a loss on Hispanic soldiers while Kit Carson and his volunteer unit saw minimal action in this battle. Thank you for watching and join us next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.